All right, guys, in the world of real estate, there's a very common idea called BRRRR, B-R-R-R-R. It stands for buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. So what you're doing, you're buying a property. Step two, you renovate the property. Kitchens, bathrooms, upgrades, roofs, everything like that. Number three, you rent out the property, lease it up. Number four, you refinance the property. The property's worth a lot more money, theoretically. You refinance it, take the money out, and you do it all over again. You repeat. You go find more properties. Now, if I heard what, the, what I'm about ready to say, I'd roll my eyes and say, sure, pal. In 2006, I was buying properties to do exactly this, and I went to a bank to go do this. And years later... One of the bankers there went to my high school like four or five years ahead of me. I saw him at like a, some sort of a high school event. And he said to me, Paul, when you came and told us that, you left the room. We're like, what is this kid doing? Why is he renovating properties? Just buy properties, turnkey. He said, we basically laughed at you. Now, that's all people do. Now, again, I get it. It's easy to say that. And I'd be rolling my eyes too and going, sure, pal, whatever. I get that. But remember, if you go back then, people were doing minor modifications to properties and they were only renovating flips. I was doing it to apartment buildings. Why? Because some guy told me, Paul, let's put $10,000 in this unit. And at that time I was like, whoa, it's a lot of money. He goes, I bet you we'll get $250 more in rent. And I said, okay, if I get $250 more in rent, multiply that by 12, that's $3,000 extra per year in rent. Now, the big key here is, this is the part that makes a lot of sense. How much of this is profit every year? Guys, my rent's already covering my, my mortgage, taxes, insurance, maintenance, prop, all the things I need to do. This is all pure profit. My return is $3,000 on 10,000 bucks or 30%. But even more important, my unit is now worth, call it to be conservative, divided by an 8% cap rate, my unit's now worth an extra $35,000 conservatively. I put 10 grand in, got 35 out, it's a profit of 25,000. I did a lot of math there. The bottom line is, you take how much you get in rent every single year and be conservative. Just multiply it by 10. And that's the extra value you created. You subtract your initial investment and that's your profit. So you make a total of $20,000 on that unit. Now, if you're smart, you do this over and over and over and over again. doesn't matter if you have one unit or 10 units or 100 units. You keep doing it. If you only have one unit, you use the money to go refinance and buy a new property. So let's do that here. Let's say you have a property. Okay, let's just say you have two units and you paid 200000 for those two units. Okay, $200,000. Let's say you put $20,000 into the property to rehab those two units. You're gonna do it for $220,000. But using those same numbers before, and by the way, I'm ballparking on those numbers. I don't know exactly what the numbers end up being, but this is the idea. Using those same numbers as before, if you put that three hundred, if you put that $10,000 in each unit and you get $250 increase, you've increased the value of your property by $35,000 a unit times two units, you're at 270,000 bucks. You're in it for 220. This is what you do now. Before, when you bought the unit for 200,000, what was your mortgage? Let's say you put 20% down. So you have 80% mortgage. You owed $160,000 on it. And you go refinance it. So your new, your new value is 270,000. Your mortgage is 160. You already have 110,000 in equity, but you've only put 220 into the property. The $40,000 down payment, plus the acquisition. So the acquisition plus the $20,000. All right. So this is a lot of numbers guys. And please, by all means, rewatch this. The quick outline is this. You bought a property for 200,000, two units. You put 10,000 each unit, 20,000 bucks total. You're now invested $220,000. Okay. But each unit now is worth $35,000 more. So now you have your original 200,000 Plus your two, two units extra at 35, you're at $270,000 in value. And you owe 160 because you only put 80%, you only put 20% down on your 200,000 bucks. So now what you can do, here's what you can do. You can now go to a bank and say to them, okay, guys, I have this property worth 270. Give me another 80% mortgage on it. 
What's that equal to? 54, $216,000 mortgage. Guess what? You owe 160. That gives you $56,000 in your pocket tax-free because a mortgage, when you take a mortgage out, it's not tax. You can go do this again. Because remember, you only put $40,000 down on that previous property. Go roll this into another property. Boom, start the process all over again. And that's how you do the B, R, 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 R method. Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. Now, of course, it's become very popular in communities like, um, what's the, um, what's that one real estate one? Bigger Pockets. Thank you, Tim, in the other room. Bigger Pockets. They talk about this all the time. The one thing I found is people get a little aggressive and make sure you understand your renovation costs and the rent you're going to get. Be conservative. Listen, we've bought properties before where we've put in, you know, $15,000 into a unit and only gotten $200 in extra bonus, an extra bump. Is it still make it worth it? Sure. I'm still making a pretty decent return on my money, over 15%. I've also bought units where I've put in $17,000 and gotten three fifty dollars bump in rent. Way better. But just make sure wherever you're at that the rent can be supported. And there is a limit in some markets. There is a limit in many, many markets. Don't go to the hood and put in you know, all these amazing marble backspot, all these things thinking you're going to get the top rent. You're not going to get that. But it is amazing to me that when I go to nice suburbs with high-end renters, that their units look, I don't have the, we put in, 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 we have some apartments in not the greatest areas and we have marble backsplash, granite countertops, all these things. And I go to these ones in the suburbs and I'm like, wait a second, look at Nick. Nick lives in a property that I've tried to buy so many times. Nick, do you have granite countertops? No. Do you have marble backsplash tile? No. And he's in a suburb called Broadview Heights, Ohio. It's a great suburb, upper middle class, great place to live. I used to live in that suburb. Mo used to live in that same property, Mo. So I look at this going, okay, I think he's under rented because he could renovate those units, make them look amazing and get much higher rents. He likes being hundred percent full. That's it. But if you want to make a lot of money and compound your money tax-free, that's the way to do it. Because remember, guys, the big key to all this is when you refinance a property, your loan proceeds are tax-free. Think about, I'm gonna to, I'll get to the boring accounting of it. When you get cash in your account from a loan, it's a debit to cash and a credit to debt. Where does it hit the income statement? Usually when you get income, it's a debit to cash and a credit to income. But you have a new debt now. So it's like, this is the math of it. For you accounting nerds out there, this is why it's all tax-free. And you can take that 56,000 from our example and go buy another property. And if you do this once a year, guys, on a $200,000 property, you're gonna wake up 20, 30, 40 years from now with tens of millions in assets. Absolutely. Just keep building on itself. And every year you do it, and guess what? Every seven or 10 years, you can probably do it to the original properties. So in year 10, you're buying a new property and doing it to a previous one and getting higher rents. That's the big key to this all. So remember, burr, B R R R R buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. Very simple. It's a very common theme. Thanks very much, guys. Please show somebody and please rewatch the video because I went through a lot of numbers and I tend to fly through numbers and I apologize for that. But very simply, buy a property for 200, put 20,000 into it. It's now worth 270 with your rent increases. You refinance it, get a mortgage for 216, 216, and you owed 160 before. You get that 56,000 and you go do it again. Thank you very much for your time.